So we're going to draw two line graphs. Uh, both are going to be PPFs. So if you want to draw it in your booklet, you can have them on the left and on the right. Really is up to you, or top bottom, depending on how large your graph needs to be. So the first graph we're going to draw is going to be Australia. So Australia's PPF. And we're going to use the table to draw that. So whenever you're drawing graphs, three things that you need to include in terms of labels, the title and the axes. So we're going to put down wheat on the y-axis and coffee <coughs> on the x-axis. Then you're going to look at the PPF table and you're going to ask yourself, what is the maximum amount of wheat that Australia can produce? So you're going to ask yourself, if Australia were to use all its resources to produce wheat, how many units of wheat can it produce? And if you look at the table, it says Australia can produce 10 wheat if all of its resources are allocated to wheat. So we want to see where that ends up. And that's going to end up over here. So the, the point is over here because uh, the higher we go on the y-axis, the more wheat is produced. And the further left we move on the x-axis, the fewer units of coffee we're producing. So we're producing zero coffee, so we want to go all the way to the left. And we're producing 10 wheat, so we're all the way up here. So next we want to represent a point where Australia is only producing coffee, so using all of its resources to um, create coffee. In the PPF we can see that that's 5 units of coffee. So you want to move from 0 to 5 on the x-axis. So we're just going to draw or label that point over there. So the vast majority of questions that I've seen on the waste assumes that the PPF is straight. So you might have learnt about the bowed PPFs in Year 11, um, but I haven't seen a bowed PPF in a question in Year 12 just yet. So you can assume, if you're not told otherwise, that the PPF is straight. So just draw a straight line between these two dots, and then you've got Australia's PPF. Okay, now I want you to have a go at drawing PNG's PPF. So have a go. Okay, so this is Papua New Guinea's PPF. Alright. So you've got um, PNG producing five units of wheat. Uh, and PNG producing 10 units of coffee. So you can see that there is a difference between Australia's PPF and PNG's PPF. So there's a bit of a, a difference in gradient or slope. Uh, you'll soon find out that slope is important because slope is going to be linked to opportunity costs, but we'll get to that in a second. Now, uh, now we've got two of the country's PPF. We want to consider a situation where the countries decide to trade but before we get to that, we need to determine first off uh, what the opportunity costs of each of these goods are for each of these countries. So what I need you to do is, I need you to uh, draw a table that looks like this. So it doesn't need to be on at the top. You can be right next to your graph depending on how you've laid out your graph. So this is how it's going to look like. You've got um, opportunity cost as the title. You've got two countries. Um, I'm going to put Australia up the top and PNG over here. You then need to put down the two goods. So I haven't left the space, which is not very smart, but it's fine. So I have wheat and coffee on this side. So wheat, 
کافی So we want to calculate the opportunity cost of these two countries producing both of these goods. So that's the end point that we're trying to get at. So to help remind you of what that means, remember that opportunity cost is what you're given up by increasing production in a good. So let's say, for example, if we were to start at 6.2, so let's say for whatever reason Australia decides to produce 6 units of wheat and 2 units of coffee, that is where it would sit on its PPF, so we'll say this is point A. This is an example of an efficient spot to be in because you are on the frontier of the PPF. If you're on the frontier of the PPF, it means you're using all of your resources efficiently. If we were producing, let's say, four units of wheat and one unit of coffee, that would be inefficient because we can increase production of both wheat and coffee and end up on the frontier, and that's more efficient. Okay, so you never want to be within the PPF or within uh, the area outside of the frontier. Is it possible for a country to be outside of the PPF? No. So you have learned that the answer is no, but now you will learn that you can end up outside the PPF uh, through trade. Okay, so if the country is a closed economy, you can't end up outside the PPF. So we don't learn about that in year 11, but again, when we trade, we can and that's one of the benefits of trade. Alright, so as we were mentioning, I wanted to explain a bit about opportunity cost. So if, let's say, we start at point A, to calculate the opportunity cost of producing an extra unit of wheat, you need to figure out how much uh, units or how many units of coffee you're giving up. So let's say we're moving from um, producing six units of wheat to seven units of wheat. So we will end up over here. So I'm drawing this in pencil just to make it different. How many units of coffee would we be giving up if we were to increase wheat production by one? Yep, 0.5. So if you were to drag this all the way down, you will see that we are moving from two to 1.5. Over here, we're moving from six to uh, set six to seven. So we're adding one unit of wheat and we are giving up half a unit of coffee. So that is the opportunity cost of wheat. Okay, That's how you can uh, understand what opportunity cost is using a graph. What I want you to do is I want you now to calculate the opportunity cost of wheat for PNG. You can do the same thing over here as what I've done. I'll leave it up here. Right, go ahead. Alright, so if we wanted to calculate the opportunity cost of wheat for PNG, we need to use either the graph or something else which I'll show you in a second. So, Zach, what did you get for the opportunity cost? Good. So, uh, an increase in production of wheat by one for PNG will require giving up two units of coffee. So, how does that look? So, we'll assume that PNG is at point B, just for argument's sake. So, PNG at the moment is deciding to produce two units of wheat uh, and six units of coffee. If PNG for argument's sake, wants to increase production from two to three. This is where it will end up. So from six units of coffee, it'll have to give up two units of coffee. So that's a lot of units of coffee that PNG is giving up. So plus one wheat, one unit of wheat, requires a reduction in coffee production by two. So then this is the opportunity cost of wheat. 
So if you want to think about opportunity costs as giving something up as a cost to your economy and you wanted to decide should Australia produce wheat or should PNG produce wheat, you want to find a country which has a lower opportunity cost because it's giving up less. So Australia is giving up half a unit of coffee, PNG is giving up two units of coffee. So which country should produce wheat? Australia, yeah, because Australia is giving up less. Okay, so that's how you can think about opportunity cost. There is a quicker way, or at least a different way of calculating opportunity cost. So if you're looking at the table of production possibilities over there, you can use a fraction to calculate the opportunity cost. So if you're looking at the opportunity cost of wheat for Australia, you can put the maximum amount of coffee Australia can produce, which is 5, divided by the maximum amount of wheat Australia can produce, which is 10, and that gives you half. That's rise over run. Rise over run is the gradient. So that's a lot quicker, but it's important that you know the background before we reach that. So for PNG, to calculate the opportunity cost of wheat, have a look at the maximum amount of wheat PNG can produce. And what's that? Of, yep. Uh, you want to put that on the denominator. So we put that on the denominator. And what do we put on the numerator? The maximum amount of coffee that PNG can produce, which is 10. And that gives us 2. So we get the same answer using either method. To get the opportunity cost of coffee, which is the next good, all you need to do uh, is flip the fraction over. So you can do the same process that I did using the graphs, that's going to take a bit of time, or you can use that trick of just flipping the fraction over, so rather than, ten of, rather than 5 over 10, it's 10 over 5, and that gives you 2. Rather than 10 over 5 for PNG, you flip it over, that gives you 5 over 10, and that gives you half. Once you've drawn the table, you can now choose which country should specialize in producing what good. You want to just circle or underline which good Australia has a lower opportunity cost in, and you want to circle or underline which good PNG has the lowest opportunity cost in. in. <coughs> So you write down, for example, Australia will specialize in wheat. Well, technically it's wheat production, so we'll write that. And PNG will specialize in coffee production. Okay, so the next step is we're going to assume that the country is going to trade. So when the countries trade, before they trade, they need to specialize because that's the whole point of trading. You can specialize in producing uh, goods and services that you're good at. So um, I'm going to draw a table which has uh, before specialization... After specialization, oops, and we'll go after trade. It's going to be. Um, I'm going to use letters just to make things a bit easier for me. Uh, 
So wheat, coffee, wheat, coffee, and then I'm going to put down Australia and PNG and total. So this is going to give you kind of an, an overview. of the numbers so remember before specialization there was a combination of production combinations that we assumed each country had so Australia produces six wheat and two coffee PNG produces two wheat and six coffee so how many units of wheat is being produced in this economy overall how many units? Yep, eight, good. What about of coffee? Eight, eight good. After specialization, the story is going to be different. So remember we said that Australia should specialize in wheat and PNG should specialize in coffee. So we're going to assume that Australia will use all of its resources to produce wheat. Looking at the production possibility table, how many units will Australia produce of wheat? Ten. Good. <coughs> how many units of coffee will Australia produce? Zero. Zero. Yeah, good. Because all of its resources are being used to produce wheat. And PNG is the opposite, because PNG will then specialize its resources uh, into the production of coffee and not wheat. So ten, and then zero. So overall, how many of the units of wheat is the economy producing now in total? Yeah, 10. And 10 for coffee as well. So you can see straight away this is showing you um, the gains from trade already because there is an additional two units of wheat and an additional two units of coffee that can be produced just by specializing the production of goods. So a bonus two units each. So the next step is going to be determining what is called the terms of trade. So the terms of trade is basically the exchange rate of one good versus the other that countries agree to. So we spoke about the WTO and its role in negotiating trade deals. So the WTO would be involved in trying to negotiate um, terms of trade between countries. Not necessarily in terms of goods or goods units but in dollar terms but just to give you um, a parallel the WTO would be the, f the organization trying to negotiate some of these things. Alright so the terms of trade will only fall within a particular boundary because if for example, a country is offering you a deal that doesn't make sense, you'll say no to it. And I'll go into a bit more detail on that in a second. Um, but I just wanted to assume the terms of trade for this example is going to be uh, one unit of wheat for one unit of coffee. So that is the terms of trade that Australia and PNG agreed to. We'll just assume that. So one unit of wheat for one unit of coffee. So, um, if <coughs> then Australia decides to keep uh, seven units of wheat, which is another decision that they make, and sell three units of wheat to PNG, how many units of coffee would Australia receive in return? Yep, so it's one to one, right? So if Australia sells three units of wheat, Australia receives three units of coffee. So that's going to end up with three over there. So if PNG then sells in the same transaction three units of coffee, then they would receive three units of wheat in return, which is three over here. And um, PNG remains or still has seven units of coffee. So we're going to add up the numbers just to check whether 
they're all consistent and they are 10 and 10 and now I want you to have a go at drawing the point at which each, each economy sits after trade in your graphs so if I were to show you where PNG ends up PNG will end up uh, at point we'll say uh, B, B star which is above the frontier because remember PNG uh, is now consuming seven units of coffee so rather than six now it's seven and it is consuming three units of wheat rather than two so it's moved up to three so it's actually above the frontier and the same thing can be said about Australia so Australia has moved out of the frontier because instead of uh, consuming six units of wheat that's increased to seven uh, and from two units of coffee that's increased to three So gains from trade is obvious when we use the PPF, when we can show that countries can now exist or um, occupy a spot outside of the PPF. If we wanted to draw a, a line representing the terms of trade, we could. And remember the terms of trade is one to one, so all you need to do is draw a line with the gradient of 1 so if it has a gradient of 1 all you're doing is lining up two numbers so 10 to 10 I I'm not going to draw it the whole way just so that it intercepts with the point same thing done with Papua New Guinea 10 to 10 there you go so the red line so I'm going to show you the red line for Australia that's that represents the terms of trade for Australia and then I'm gonna raise it up over there and that's going to be the terms of trade for PNG so we spoke about the terms of trade the terms of trade does not necessarily have to be a one-to-one -one, so it can be different okay so uh, terms of trade I'll leave this up here terms of trade so if you are let's say Australia and you're looking at trading wheat for coffee okay so you want to draw kind of a a range which represents acceptable terms of trade on one side you want to put down half coffee and on the other you want to put down two units of coffee where we get that from is from this table so we've got these two numbers from that table yes yeah, see the opportunity cost for Australia of uh, wheat My mistake. Uh, not this. It's from here. Okay, so the opportunity cost of uh, wheat for Australia uh, and for PNG that sets the the minimum and maximum amounts of the terms of trade that is acceptable. So, if, for example, the terms of trade were below a half. So let's say, for example, e.g., uh, the terms of trade were, um, let's say, one wheat for 0 0.4 coffees. So if PNG goes, hey, Australia, we will buy one unit of wheat for 0 0.4 units of coffee, what do you think Australia is going to do? No. Nah. Nah. Go away. Not even going to look at you. Low ball. low ball, yeah, it's a low ball, exactly. Because why would Australia even do that? Because Australia can just uh, sacrifice one unit of wheat for 0.5 units of coffee. Doesn't make sense at all. So if I give you another example, if PNG, um, so we'll flip it to the other side. If Australia goes and says, "All right, I want 
two and a half units of coffee for one unit of wheat. So you've got to give us two and a half units of coffee for one unit of wheat. Will PNG say yes? No. No, exactly. So PNG can change its resource allocation within itself, give up two units of coffee for that extra unit of wheat. So why would PNG pay Australia two and a half units of coffee for just one unit of wheat? Doesn't make sense. So these points, so point 0.4 and 2.5, they are to the right and to the left of this range. So they will only accept a terms of trade which is between 0.5 and 2 units of coffee. So anywhere in between. So if I were to put 1, it would be somewhere over here. So 1 unit of coffee. And that would be okay because that is between the range of acceptable terms of trade.